Hello, welcome to the Hellion 6 tutorial video series. Today we're talking about wavetable synthesis. And we're going to be talking about it for a few episodes as well. It's a pretty weighty subject. Today we're going to have an introduction to the concept of wave wavetable synthesis and how it's implemented in Hellion. And let's just get on with it. We're going to drag a program into the slot. We're going to create a layer, we're going to create a zone, and it's going to be a wavetable zone. So first things first, we have a sample viewer up here, but no sample, and it doesn't matter. We can make sound without samples, you don't need them. And in fact, for the whole of today's episode, we're not gonna go anywhere near the sample editor. We're just going to deal with the wavetable all on its own. Why do we hear a sound? Because when we create an instance of a wavetable zone, we get given a sine wave for free. This is our first wave and it's in our wavetable. It doesn't look much like a table at the moment because it's only got one thing. The concept of wavetables is that you can have up to 256 waves in this thing. We've got one at the moment. And for each wave in the table, the synthesizer will play that wave over and over again a certain number of times. And then it'll move on to the second wave. And while it's doing so, it'll cross fade elegantly and then it'll play the second wave and then it'll cross fade into the third wave all the way through the wavetable scanning through them one at a time. At the moment the reason we hear a sine wave is because that's the only wave in the table and so on the sustain point when we hold our key down it plays the last entry in the table over and over again so this is the first and the last entry in the table. If we unfreeze our oscilloscope there it is. That is a C3. If I reduced this frequency to somewhere in the region of 260, we get exactly, more or less exactly, one wave uh, in the oscilloscope because that's the frequency of C3. Can't really call it a wavetable if you've only got one thing in it, so let's add some stuff. We add stuff by clicking this little button down here, create new wave. And I'm gonna add a square wave. And now something exciting happened up here. So this is the envelope page. And what this is telling us is that when we start playing through the wave table, we're gonna begin with a sine wave. Over the course of this one second, we're gonna cross fade from a sine wave into a square wave. The square wave is the last wave in the table, and therefore, when we get to our sustain point, that's the one that's going to be sustained. Let's hear it. Sign transitions into square. Let's add another wave. Let's add a triangle. Now, if we zoom out, we can see sign going to transition into square wave. If I select the square wave, this line gets highlighted. This is the point at which the square wave is being played purely just the square wave. For that instantaneous moment in time, there is no crossfading and it's pure square wave. On either side, we're either crossfading from the sign or out of the square into the triangle. Let's hear that. And there's our triangle on the sustain point. If I unfreeze my oscilloscope, there it is. If I'm fast enough, I'll try to freeze it in the middle. There you go. So we've got a little bit of cross fading, but it's very nearly a pure square wave. These lines representing the cross fades are editable. And now we're going to get very little square in the middle, more sine, more triangle. All the way around. Lots of square in the middle. If I select this zone, hold control down on my keyboard and click the crossfade um, graph. It resets it. Let's add some more. Let's add a saw wave. Now, the wave that gets added to the table will get added after the currently selected segment. And if I select the square wave and now add some white noise, 
it gets inserted. So one, two, three, four, five waves in the table. The sine wave is at the beginning. This is the white noise wave which is currently selected. This line in the middle is brighter than the others, indicating that that's the currently selected midpoint of the segments. So that's the point at which the white noise is perfect. Let's try and catch that. There we go. Chaos reigns. All this jiggity jaggedy stuff. <clears throat> but we've just transitioned out of a square wave and so there's the cliff the drop off. If I click and select this marker in the middle of the segment zone, so this represents the white noise and drag to the, to the right, you see how the segments after it are moving as well. Let's have a bit of a play with the different options available to us for moving, manipulating the lengths of the segments of each of these waves. If I press my control key down on the keyboard and try to pick this line up, it won't let me move it. That's basically anchored, because it's saying, well, you're only dealing with this wave, and this wave is fixed in this point in time. If I hold the control key down and select uh, this triangle as well, now it lets me move this uh, marker. This is the white noise marker. And as I pass other markers, it moves the white noise segment to the appropriate ordinal position in the table. If I select the saw wave, pick up the middle zone again. Now, can you see what it's done? It's selected two different zones. The sawtooth, a uh, saw wave is still selected as is the white noise. So now any editing I perform is gonna, is gonna be executed on both of these wave tables at the same time. So if I, shrink this um, sawtooth segment you can see that the white noise segment is shrinking as well so any currently selected segment is edited simultaneously now I can reset the widths of these segments really easily if I right click select all and type in here 800 then they're all edited I can now pick them up and scale them. They're all still selected, so I'm scaling them all. They're all shrinking, they're all widening. I just select the two at the end, so I'm just control um, on my keyboard to multi-select zones. Now just those two zones are being affected. With this loop option up here, if we select on, then when it gets to the end of the loop, it'll come back around again. And in alt mode, it's going to scan backwards and forwards through the wave. With uh, legato on, if I press a key and then a second key, it continues all of the playbacks. As long as I've got something held down, the rest of them will jump in at that point. As opposed to when Legato isn't on, every new key refires the wavetable sequence. You're never going to get a situation where multiple keys are at different points in the wavetable. You've only got one kind of virtual playhead and Legato determines whether or not it re-triggers. As long as something is held down, it will carry on scanning through the table and other notes can kind of jump on the wagon. In sync mode, instead of this being 450 milliseconds, we're now in time-based structure. So you'd set your segment lengths like that. We have a position value at the moment. Every time we start, we start right at the very beginning of the table, but we don't have to. There's our position marker. We can drag that wherever we want. Say start playing from there, and it will. Enter zero, it goes back to the beginning. This 2x um, button is gonna double the envelope time of any currently selected segment. So there's the two segments at the end getting bigger, and now they're getting smaller. If I bring the white noise segment into the party, now they all double together and they all halve together. 
single click on a segment, double its length. We also have a global speed setting. And obviously, all of these values are modulation targets from your modulation matrix. We'll deal with that later, that's a bit more advanced. I select this white noise block and then click and drag. It, the, the square turns red and now if I was to drop it here, it will overwrite that triangle sample. I pick it up and drag it in between the sine wave and the square. It moves it. So in between, over the top, in between, over the top. So even just at that stage, without having introduced the concept of sampling or any of the further like rich feature set that we've got in our wavetable, we've already got an interesting synthesis engine. We're scanning through five different, well, in this case, four different wave types. Uh, and we're able to control how long we spend in each wave and how we um, modulate, how we cross fade from one wave into another. That gives us an awful lot of flexibility all in its own right, but at the moment we've just used absolutely stock waves. Well, that isn't close to stretching the full capabilities of the wavetable uh, synthesizer in Hallion, and in the next episode we'll start to unlock some of those other secrets. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.